It's time to start the show. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Making of Mega Visions. You like that? You like the theme song? All right, so hey, what are we looking at? We are looking at Mega Visions issue eight. Work in progress. Work in progress. I am looking at my cup of coffee here. <sighs> Little ASMR for you. Is that is that did I do that right? ASMR? I don't know. All right, so um. Uh, what am I doing? So I want to show you all out there a little bit about my workflow for making this because I'm stuck here for hours doing it and I feel like ranting about <laughs> how no one will ever appreciate how much effort it takes to make this simple shit. Um, it doesn't matter, folks. It's, it's my lot in life. We're made to suffer. So this is AVP, Aliens vs. Predator, from the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The final complete layout. This one's done. The text is temporary. Um, what I want to do is show you all how I use... Let me, get, let me grab this. I'm doing this live, so just give me one little second here. I thought I had it open. Um, so what I do is... We go out and play these games and create videos, gameplay videos. Um, and what I do is I go and I create these game screens and for AVP, see, AVP full, um, we play the game and then I rip screens from the whole game, 500 plus screens. It's This is ridiculous how many, this is like 500 screens from this. Um, I put them into a program called uh, PRF, that's what this is. You see this here, this is a floating, this is a separate program. I put them all in here and this stores all the images. You can see the cutscenes and I can, you know, arrange them like this. The raw basic screens drop in here. And I do that first. And I use that by counting how many screens I need here. And then I pull screens into my PRF documents and save that. Um, then I go sleep and I come back the next day. And then what I do is I just basically drop in the screens with no airbrushing or anything, just basic screens into Photoshop. So all the imagery for Mega Visions and anytime I do these gaming magazines, this right here, this layout you're seeing here, well, this is from Thunder Force. So when I drop in the screens, they look like this. This is just a basic template. See these yellow borders and and generic coloring, nothing special about it. Um, this is the basic. This is what I do. I just drop these screens in. It takes about an hour to 90 minutes per two pages to do that. Um, I, I go in no hurry. I try to tell a story. Like I work backwards and kind of try to flow through boss fights and get little sequences put together. So it takes about an hour or two per two pages to do that comfortably um, and then I, up, I save them update it make sure everything fits in InDesign then I come back and I start to recolor hit control Y uh, and airbrush the shite and I pull I try to think of a color scheme so with AVP for me it's always like purple and green purple for aliens green for predator and then I use that purple and green motif and work it throughout the entire piece changing the colors of the screens to make everything look really pretty I don't, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these magazines are, are for fans and collectible by fans. 
Uh, for me, it should give you the experience of having played the game, right? But I don't really care if the screens are obviously the, are 100% are color accurate. Obviously, the game isn't purple. I get it. Obviously, the game doesn't have these kinds of lighting effects. I get it. I, I don't care. I want my layout to look pretty. Um, this piece of key art I drew uh, and did some very minimalist coloring here. Uh, this was a commission I did about a year ago. Uh, just a personal commission for a fan, so I had a piece of art lying around. Dropped it in, didn't have it colored, it was just raw pencils. Um, and then I used gradient maps. Gradient maps are a way of Photoshop, basically, uh, let me see if I can bring one open here. So this is a gradient map. So what it does is you create a gradient based off one color, two colors, or usually two colors, up to as many as you want and it will substitute that color for any value so it goes from white to black so anything over here that anything that's white will be pink all the grays in between to black will be that color so i turn that off you can see there's black and white underneath and this this red is because the line art is set to overlay so it's not really red it's a layer effect and that just colors the image for me so it's really nice um and it helps give the screen's priority when you do that minimalistic coloring. Um, so it's a little bit more of a pulp feel, an ash can feel. You know, one of the things that I'm slowly pushing the magazine to do is to have this blend of old ash cans and if you remember original instruction manuals and even the original like Nintendo Power or Nintendo fan letters or duotone newsletters. So move, trying to mix some of that duotone retro stuff with the 90s hyper color, right? The, like the color over the sort of, uh, that's not a good example, but let's look at the Sonic piece. You can see the Sonic layout. This is the final Sonic layout to give you an idea. Um, this sort of big, bold colors, right? Big, bold colors. Uh, this key art I drew, but I'm not done coloring it. I still have to color it. Um, so mixing that early 80s, mid 90s, and then when you get to the more modern games, uh, like we're doing, like AVP, this is a more modern game, I'm mixing in the mid 2000s in terms of these clean layouts. These layouts are really clean, big screen, big screen, uh, some, you know, plenty of uh, helpful negative space, right? It's not too cluttered. But then when we go back in time a little bit, right? We go back in time to the 90s, oh, boom, we got these mad, retro layouts so it's this blending of of 80s and 90s and 2000s with a little bit of like what i like to do and, and i don't even know what that is sometimes sometimes i just make shit up um as i go along uh these screen borders used to be done in a magazine called game fan magazine it's the first time i ever saw it back in the 90s and i got to help relaunch game fan in 2010 and i had never done screen borders before and I know a lot of the old editors from the game fan days who were still prolific on the internet uh, at the time made certain to let me know how much they hated screenshot borders. But what I loved about screenshot borders was that they told a story. Um, now they could, back in the 90s, they added a shitload of color to your page. So what I've done is I've taken the screenshot borders and I've duotoned every other screen to give me a green to purple. Green to purple, green to purple. So it's just, Taking these colors, green to purple, green to purple. Now, here you see this red. This is a sidebar. So in the magazine, we're going to talk about a retro game, the retro AVP, the arcade game by Capcom, Aliens vs. Predator, of which these little chibis I drew years ago for fun. Um, so I got to reuse those, and I made little fake stickers out of them, right? That's fun. Uh, and then for that sidebar, I want it to pop out, so I made it red. So green, purple, in between red. So it's got a nice color scheme in this. And you can use these colors, and I recolored this. The game isn't red, isn't cream, red to cream. I created a gradient map and changed the colors so that this would unify and tie itself together. So we're using color to tell a story. We're using texture to give a sense of, 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 of age and authenticity and, and usedness and beat up. I don't know, I like it. It's got this tone. Um, the magazine's come along really nice, folks. The final suckle, suckle, <laughs> is that a word? Suckles. The final Sonic versus Knuckles layout is right here. 
I was able to reuse color pencils, this color pencil commission I did last Christmas for uh, one of my one of my fans. Now, I'm aware of this Sonic Knuckles, uh, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles. There was no Dreamcast when it came out. I get it. So I made a little note. Yes, I know this is a Dreamcast co controller, but you take what you can get. So um, in the commission I put in the Dreamcast, I'm not redoing it to put in a fucking Sega Genesis controller. People, no freaking way. Um, but here I was able to take that sticker idea and then I use the pixels from the actual game and create some distressing and uh, some weatherness. And I'm able to create little pixels from little stickers from the pixel art, little fake stickers. And so, yeah, it's adding fun, right? Adding fun. Being able to blow up one of those stickers and replace the sprite in a screen and kind of just add a little bit of fun. But also keeping it cohesive. This right here was a green to purple scheme, coincidentally. But where I lean more on the yellow and orange as a contrast, right? This rainbow color, which is a little bit more 90s, right? So you can see, you can take green to purple and do green to purple, but do it two different ways, you know? So it doesn't, this doesn't feel very much like this at all, you know? And part of that is really leaning on these orange screens here. And by the way, there's a lot of airbrushing and extra little gradients and color things that I did to the screens to make this game look way better than it really is. Um, but the reason why is I want the magazine to look really good. So we're not gonna be hampered over at Mega Visions uh, by the limitations of the screens. We're gonna create something that is just made by fans for fans, right? To get a little, to market it a little bit, folks. Um, but so that's that's what I'm up to. That is 12 minutes of nonstop talking about making Mega Visions Magazine. Uh, right now I'm in the middle of, I just dropped screens into Thunder Force 5 and I drop screens into Fantasy Star. So this is gonna be a really cool issue. We got a ton of work. I got a ton of airbrushing and sticker work to add in here. We got some key art we gotta to add to the Fantasy Star. We got some key art we gotta to add to the Thunder Force, more airbrushing. Um, gotta replace that controller. I know that's a mega, that's a Master System controller. We'll get a Mega Drive controller right on there. Um, or get Genesis, whatever. I'm sorry, Saturn. This is a Saturn. That'll be a Saturn controller. So people will go, it's a Saturn game, bro. Like, I know, I know it's a Saturn game. Uh, all right. So that's where I'm at so far, folks. I will do another Making Mega Visions probably around the time I'm making the cover. So we don't spoil the whole issue for you, but we got tons of stuff coming up. Just kind of walk you through it. I'll be making these uh, How I Make Game Magazine layouts over and over again. Every issue, I'll make at least one new one. So um, if you have any questions or comments or you'd like me to cover something in a tips video or something, just let me know. Leave them in the comments below. I will get to it. If you'd like to support the magazine, get a printed physical copy of this issue when it ships. We only charge when it ships. It's at the Patreon. And you can go right there at patreon.com forward slash megavisions. Or if you want to have a little bit more fun, uh, go to Shining Force 4, the number 4, shiningforce4.com. I bought the URL because I've always wanted Shining Force 4 to get made and it won't. So, uh, and it redirects to the Patreon. So if you just go to shiningforce, the number 4.com, you will end up at the Patreon. You can sign up and get a copy uh, when they're physically available. We will not have a whole bunch after, folks. We're, these are, this is a in labor of love here, right? It's an endeavor. Of, of effort and love, and uh, there's just not a lot of money in that. So if you want to get a copy, go go there and support the uh, deal. Otherwise, just hang out here and go, wow, that's pretty. Click like. You can support me. That's another way to do it, folks. All right, talk to you all later. Thanks for hanging out. I'm out of here. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs>